Well, it has been a long and mixed history for Red Sox Nation. And while that term, Red Sox Nation, was coined about, well, within the last 20 years, fans have been there for more than a century. And our next guests look at this phenomenon in the new documentary, Rooters, The Birth of Red Sox Nation. Take a look. Today's baseball fan culture is the product of those original Boston Rooters. The first to sneak homemade signs into the stadium. The first to organize crowd chants and taunts. The first to schedule road trips. And the first to introduce popular American music to the ballpark. Their influence survives to this day, although they came from a forgotten, ancient, bygone era. And joining me this morning is Peter Nash, the writer and producer of this documentary, and Anthony Moreski, co-director and editor. Thanks for being here, both of you. Thanks for having Thank us. You. Good time for you guys, a little synergy with the Red Sox doing so well in the documentary coming out right now, huh? Yeah, I mean, to be covering the history of Red Sox fans, perfect time is, you know, when you're about to make a championship run again. So uh, Now, this is obviously not just about Red Sox Nation, which is something that's relatively recent. This is more than that, right, This, this the, the documentary? Yeah, it really started, I mean, about 100 years ago, a group of two to 300 guys from Roxbury, uh, led by this guy, Nuff Said McGreevy, and JFK's grandfather, Honey Fitz. And, I mean, this group of just 200 has morphed into, you know, the millions today. And a lot of people don't realize their ties to this group as fans. Mm. And so you go back and you start at the beginning then and looking at it. Exactly. We try to parallel the past uh, to the present and, and everything in between, basically, that, to, to show those ties that... Where did the, the whole Red Sox Nation, wh when did that happen? What was there, can we say that there's like a date or when that term was first used or anything like that? It was a writer named Cobb for the Globe, I think right around the 86 series in that, in that uh, neighborhood. But really the, the Fenway faithful, I guess, was more so in the, in the 40s and 50s that, that that came into use. And that was pretty much the, the lean years of the team where it's kind of like the lovable, lovable loser mentality. And, uh, but, you know, the real glory years was with the Royal Rooters through... 1903 up to 1918 and really with the win in 2004 uh, you can really tie in and what we try to tie in is the actual legacy and the, the family histories of original Royal Rooter families like the Dooley family, mm. the Fitzgeralds uh, and even even McGreevy and that's really the real story that we found here that probably the most interesting thing about the whole project for us you know it's interesting for uh, fans to be uh, as uh, so fanatical about their team there has to be a real emotional connection I don't know what it is about the Red Sox but can we put our finger on what that connection is it's more than just a winning team which is what we have now it's probably Boston used to be a two two-team town right, and when yeah the Braves and when the Braves left pretty much all the focus was on the Red Sox and because it's you know just such a large area with one team that that has definitely helped it but I mean the fact John Thorne one of our historians in the film basically says that uh, you know losing for a long period of time actually can help create a more fervent fan base and that seems to be what happened over the lean years and you know finally you have the capper of you know World Series victory in 2004, and that's where you, we, we really got to take a step back and look at, you know, uh, how, how did the Dooley family legacy, which, you know, started back at the 1903 World Series around that time, uh, really influence the fans today. And, actually, you know, they were the first to actually go to spring training, you know, back from the 1880s all the way up to the 60s. And, I mean, that's like a you know, perfect pastime for Red Sox Nation today. And now you've got this whole thing with Red Sox Nation. They have the election for the president, and they have, you know, they start joking about the cabinet and all this sort of thing, and it's gotten to be this whole new, you know, huge life apart from the team and what's on the field. Now, I couldn't help but notice an old friend uh, is the narrator of this, right? That's right. It's uh, Mike Adams. Mike, Mike Adams, Adams, formerly <laughs> of uh, Sports World and NECN, so it was great to hear Mike's voice, and he's a real baseball guy, too. He loves the essence of the game, so it must have been nice to have him do it. Uh, yeah, he's a, he's a character. He's he sure uh, is. pretty, um, I don't know if, you know, the... The, the, one of the first times I was really aware of how crazy he was was when he, you know, he took over the station at EI a couple of years ago, <laughs> and then a couple of months later we found out he's the guy who's going to be narrating the film. So, and <laughs> you know, Mikey idea. really played it straight, like unlike you might normally like view Mikey. And uh, I mean, really, he did a great job and uh, really brought a whole nother level, you know, to the whole production. Terrific! It is called Rooters: The Birth of Red Sox Nation. And where can folks get it? I guess, I guess it's pretty much available now. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, Olympia Sports, uh, Best Buy, Barnes and Noble, Amazon. You can get it online, but it's going to be pretty much in all stores throughout this week. Well, Peter and Anthony, good luck with it, and it's uh, great to see. And it sounds like a lot of fun. Thanks. For Thank you. Us. You're welcome.